Hi everybody. White balance is an aspect of underwater photography that many people find confusing, but it's really quite simple. Basically, we try to adjust the white balance to get the colors in our image as accurate as possible. Now underwater, if we use a strobe or flash, that will restore the colors that the water column takes away. And a, a setting called auto white balance is usually just fine, okay? But with ambient light, available light, no flash or strobe, underwater, okay, our images will take on a blue cast. And colors like red can fade and disappear as the water column approaches 15 or 20 feet. Now remember, the water column is our depth plus the distance from our camera to the subject, all right? The water column removes not just contrast and clarity, but it also removes color. Now in this video, we're gonna talk about how to deal with the altered color that we get from the water column in our underwater images when we use available light, no strobe or flash. Let's check out some examples. Okay, let's talk about different ways to deal with white balance. One is we can stay very shallow and get close and just shoot auto white balance, where the camera makes the best guess on color correction on a shot-by-shot -shot basis. I shot this JPEG image with auto white balance of a filefish at 15 feet depth on a bright sunny day, and the color looks pretty good. And uh, same with this turtle, auto white balance JPEG, uh, close to the turtle, bright sunny day. But often we cannot be so shallow and so close, and auto white balance really does not to work uh, work very well. This JPEG image taken with auto white balance of a spade, spade fish has a very bluish cast. Um, one option is to simply convert your JPEG image to black and white. This is the same image of those spade fish and it looks much better when I simply remove the color with one simple click in post processing, processing using my cheap Photoshop uh, elements. However, converting to black and white really does not work so well for many or most underwater images. As in this image of a diver on a reef, the color looked bad, I removed it and made it a um, black and white. Well, where's all the beautiful colors? It doesn't really work. Now, some cameras have a mode, a white balance mode called underwater mode. My dive buddy Mark Levine got this picture of me and a ray in the Florida Keys a while back using underwater mode on his Sea Life compact camera with no flash. It looks slightly red, but I think the color looks pretty good overall. However, in my own experience, the underwater mode on most cameras often does not work well and also cannot be adjusted for different depths and different water colors. Now, underwater filters are also an option. I don't really use them much, but I have seen great results from filters. However, a filter only works at a certain range of depths and also removes some light. I feel a better solution is to use a manual white balance setting if shooting JPEGs. I often use this when shooting JPEGs in ambient light and it works pretty well. Now cameras have different ways of setting the manual white balance, so you should learn how to do this with your own camera. But basically I set my camera in manual white balance mode, take the image of a neutral colored object, a gray slate or a dive buddy scuba tank. The camera will record the white balance at this depth. It's good to redo this process if you change depth by 10 feet or more, and this will result in much more accurate colors. Here's a picture taken of me taking a shot of a gray slate for manual white balance in the Keys back in 2006 with a really rudimentary compact underwater camera. And here's a shot of the fireworm uh, taken at a similar depth on the same dive. The image at the left is a JPEG using auto white balance uh, the image at the right is a JPEG using manual white balance and has much better color, even with this um, fairly basic camera back in 2006. Here's a more recent shot. This is a shot of a sea star and diver using the auto white balance uh, on uh, JPEG with my compact camera. And this is the same thing using manual white balance mo uh, mode. The color in this latter image is much more realistic. Manual white balance works best when fairly shallow. At depths greater than 30 or 40 feet, it has a smaller effect, and it can't bring back certain colors that have been completely absorbed by the water, like reds. Remember also to switch your white balance back to auto when using the flash, otherwise your photo will look really too red. In my opinion, if your camera can shoot raw, then doing this and then correcting white balance and post-processing is by far the best and easiest way to get the best white balance. Here's an image of a parrotfish shooting with auto white balance. Here's a JPEG image. And the same image taken in raw and then using, making a simple white balance adjustment in post-processing. Look at how better and how much more realistic the color is. Same thing with this image of my dive buddies in the Caymans. 
the image a JPEG using auto white balance and then use shooting in RAW and then adjusting the image, the white balance and post-processing. Um, now you have to use, you have to have a camera that will shoot RAW and you need software to correct the white balance. I use Lightroom and believe me it's very simple. Shooting underwater images with no flash or strobe is fun and can produce some really cool images. But if we are not really shallow and fairly close to our subject, the water column will mess up our color and create a blue cast to our image. In this video, I tried to show some ways that we can deal with the problems of white balance when using underwater photography in available light. I hope you found it helpful, and thanks a lot for tuning in.